What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, we are going to talk about Newton's second law of motion. Hopefully, you've seen my video on Newton's first law. If not, no big deal. These are a little bit different. I'm going to talk about what it is, how it's used, an example that uses it, as well as how it's related to the weight of an object. This is going to be great for anybody taking the SAT physics exam, AP 1 or C. It's not really used in physics too that much, but AP 1 and C, and here in my home state with the New York State Regents exam. Let's get into it. First and foremost, guys, it is an equation. Now, this equation can be put into words, but it's shown traditionally as this. And what this says is the net force is equal to the mass of an object and its acceleration, where force and acceleration are both vectors. What the heck is this thing? This is the sigma. It's a Greek symbol, capital, and it just means the sum of. So instead of sum of, you might see this also written sometimes, guys, as just net force. That is the same as a sum of, which is equal to ma. Sometimes we can assume that we know that acceleration is a vector. So we don't need to always write that vector symbol depending on the course you take. But essentially, the equation says that the sum of the forces acting on an object in its direction of motion is equal to mass times the acceleration of that object. Now, the best way to really talk about this is to see it in action. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a book on a table. Now, this book is going to have some sort of velocity to the right. I'm going to tell you that there is an applied force. I'm just going to show that as Fa. That's going to be equal to 4 newtons. And I'm going to tell you that there is a friction force. I mean, if you're not up to friction in your course, that's no big deal. Just know that friction is a force that opposes motion for now. That is equal to 2 newtons. And I also know that this box has a mass of 1,100 grams. Now, with this information, I can find what is the acceleration of this box. And to do so, it's really just a two-step process. First, I must find the F net in the direction of motion. And I usually call this DOM. So if you watch me throughout this year, I call the direction of motion DOM. I just write it like that. And when I say the direction of motion, I want to be specific to the X and Y directions. Because if I'm not at an X and Y direction, I must find the components. And you can find out how to find the components if you're not sure using a resultant in my resultants video. I will leave that at the end or in the description. You could check those out. Now, guys, this is a vector. And whenever we deal with velocities and vectors, we need to call one side of the vector positive and the other side negative. So I'm going to call anything over here that moves to the right positive and anything over here that moves to the left negative. So now when I find F net, the sum of the forces, that's going to be equal to 4 newtons plus a minus 2 newtons. And once again, it's the sum, but it's minus 2 because it is going opposite to what I call positive. So the sum of the forces in this direction of motion is going to be 2 newtons. Now, I keep talking about direction of motion, and I keep talking about the sum of the forces in this direction because these two are not the only forces acting on this box. It's a little bit ahead of our time right now, but there's also a force down due to gravity, and there's also a force upwards that the table exerts, and these two are equal and opposite because there's no acceleration up or down. As this object moves to the right, A is going to be equal to 0 meters per second squared. So if I know that F net equals MA, so for the Y direction, if A is equal to 0, well then F net has to also be equal to 0 newtons, which allows me to say that, wow, that's great because if I just solve for F net and I call, say, up positive and down negative, F net is equal to Fn minus Fg, which equals zero, which then means that the force of normal must be equal to Fg. So this is how we're going to use the acceleration of the box and Newton's second law to sometimes find variables that aren't explicitly given to us. Now for this particular case, once again, I'm just dealing with the net forces in the direction of motion because if there's no motion up and down, we know that F net is equal to zero and therefore acceleration has to be equal to zero. If this box does not accelerate, there is no F net. doesn't mean there's no forces. It means there's no net force. So now if I say that the sum of the forces 
is equal to the mass of the box times the acceleration of the box, I know that A is going to be equal to F over M. So the net force I just found to be 2 newtons divided by 1.1 kilograms. Remember, guys, grams is not a fundamental unit for mass. It must be converted. We can now say that the acceleration of this box is equal to 1.8 meters per second squared. This number is a positive number, so that means it is to the right. Remember, acceleration is a vector, so it needs a direction. Now, this may seem like a very, very simple example using Newton's second law, but it's really not. But you are going to use it over and over again. It's probably one of the most important formulas in all of physics. It's going to be used in pulleys, which I have videos on that, tensions of strings and ropes, and also in finding weight. Now, how is this used to find the weight of an object? I went into great detail about weight in my gravity video, but if we just look right now, F equals ma. So this is a force, mass, acceleration. And this applies anywhere in the universe. But now here, right on Earth, Earth specific, I could say that there is a force due to gravity, which is also called weight. That is equal to how massive I am or an object is, m, times the acceleration due to this force of gravity downward, which we know is little g. And that is known as 9.8 meters per second squared. On the AP level, we can just call it 10. So for example, if I have a box that's sitting on a table, and I know this box is one kilogram, I know that it has a force due to gravity or a weight that it pushes on the floor that is going to be equal to m times g. 1 kilogram times 10 meters per second squared, that has a weight of 10 newtons. Weight, guys, is a force. Weight and mass are very different. Your mass is the same every single place in the universe, but your weight depends on this little g. You want to go, you want to lose weight really, really fast? Head up to the moon. G is about one sixth. So your weight will be about one-sixth it is here on Earth. So that's how we use it to find weight. Inside the Newton's Law playlist, guys, there are a bunch of different examples of how I show you how to use this, especially on the AP level. I'm going to be continuing to add content to that. If you have any questions about Newton's Second Law, please just leave them down in the comments section below. Until I see you in the next one, stay positive, work really, really hard, be kind to the person next to you. I'll see you on the next one.